SummerSlam, the biggest party of the summer. The event that causes Brock Lesnar to F5 Sharks and the event that summer makes all of the ladies strip down to their negligee and dance around in the garden with water hoses and sprinklers and as a key part of WWE's calendar, one of the company's fable big four, SummerSlam is as momentous as it is hot, you know, because of all the sun and the summer things and whatnot. This means that for every Bulldog vs Hart, Michaels vs Razor, Mysterio vs Angle, there's sheer moments of wtf -ery that whip this sick guy up into a frenzy. I'm King Ross and here are the 10 biggest WTF moments in SummerSlam history. At number 10 we've got Shawn Michaels vs Hulk Hogan from SummerSlam 2005. This is the match when Shawn Michaels worked himself up into a shoot brother, or on this occasion worked himself up into doing some ridiculous bumping with the aim of embarrassing Hulk Hogan. As the story goes, Hulk and Shawn were supposed to have two matches together, the first happening at SummerSlam before a rematch the following month at Unforgiven. Shawn was told he was going to have to put over Hulk at SummerSlam, but he wasn't happy about it. But business is business, right? Besides, he was supposed to win at Unforgiven the next month, he'd get that win back soon anyway. What was the problem? Well, the problem was that Shawn was told in the build-up to their SummerSlam match that Hulk was working hurt and wouldn't be able to do the job in the return bout. After hearing this, Michaels thought to himself, F*** it, I'm going to make a mockery of this man. I mean, F*** it, I'm going to do a mockery of this man. Because Sean's got a husky voice. Anyway, so he proceeded to oversell everything, and then some. The best part of this match wasn't Sean trying to make a mockery of Hulk Hogan, it was Hogan's reaction. There's no doubt that Michaels thought that overselling everything would get some sort of reaction from the Hulkster, exposing him somewhat on pay-per-view. Hulk, however just stood there and watched solemnly at Sean's ridiculousness. He made him look like an utter tit. Michaels had been worked by the best worker, not that kind of worker, you know the kind of worker I mean, of all time. Number 9, Lex Luger celebrates not winning the title at SummerSlam 1993. Baby faces are so f***ing stupid aren't they? SummerSlam 93's main event saw Lex Luger challenge Yokozuna for the WWF Championship in a match that had two stipulations. If Lex lost, he would never get a rematch, while the glorified bus driver also had to cover the metal plate in his forearm with padding. The climax of this surprisingly decent match saw Lex strike down Mr. Fuji, and with the referee attendant to Fuji's aid, he would remove his forearm padding, whack Yoko upside the head, and send the big booty bastard tumbling down to the floor. That baby got back, hasn't he? By gum, that baby's got back. Needless to say, because of his massive arse, Yoko wouldn't be able to make it back into the ring, meaning that Lex won via countout. One thing that everyone apart from Bobby the Brain Heeman on currently had seemingly forgotten though, was that you can't win a title via countout. Yoko was still the champion. Despite this, balloons and streamers came down from the rafters, fellow baby faces took to the ring and all sorts of pomp and circumstance took place. All for a countout victory that didn't result in the championship win. The legend goes that Vince McMahon sanctioned this celebration because he thought a win was a win. Despite this win being the hollowest win in for f***ing ever. Number 8, Undertaker vs Undertaker from SummerSlam 1994. What a load of shit, eh? After being murdered by Yokozuna at 1994's Royal Rumble, Ted DiBiase claimed to have bought the recently deceased Undertaker. Paul Bearer, however, believed the million dollar man's dead man was a fake man. The match had a bizarre link with the third Naked Gun movie. Leslie Nielsen and George Kennedy spent the weeks leading up to SummerSlam trying to find the real dead man. Fellow Naked Gun star OJ Simpson was a bit busy during this time, as he was about to go on trial for murdering his wife. Anyway, 10 minutes of nothingness passed us by at SummerSlam 94, with the realisation of how stupid this idea was hitting everybody concerned like a bastard train. Although, we do have to compliment WWE's makeup team from the time for making Brian Lee look remotely like Mark Calloway's Taker. The show went off the air with Nielsen and Kennedy inspecting an empty casket backstage, before finding a locked briefcase on the floor and declaring the case closed. Because... Films. Number 7, the custody of Dominic Ladder match from SummerSlam 2005. How do you sort the custody of a real life child? F*** the courts. Have a ladder match at SummerSlam instead. This is what Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio did in 2005 after an emotional storyline involving Rey's real life son, Dominic. The Big D, Big Dom, 
Dom Diddley Dominic. After their stint as a tag team came to the end, a series of shouting matches between the pair resulted in Eddie playing severe mind games with Ray. Latino Heat revealed that he knew one of Ray's darkest secrets. In a move that some thought went too far for WWE, Eddie revealed that Ray and his wife were having problems conceiving a child, leaving Ray's son Dominic not only adopted, but actually Eddie's biological child. Jesus Christ, this is complicated stuff you wouldn't even find on Jerry Springer. Never mind WWE. Anyway, Guerrero wanted custody of his son, so instead of taking the matter to the courts like any normal person would, Dom's custody was put on the line in a ladder match. Custody papers were suspended high above the ring and the pair had to climb the ladder to get them. The match itself was a classic encounter between two of the greats of the modern era, but the concept was f***ing stupid, wasn't it? Needless to say, Ray got the emotional win and was reunited with his son. Ah but they still could have gone to the courthouse and done it properly like any normal person would. It's almost as if this custody case wasn't a real thing at all. Number six, Paul Bearer turns on The Undertaker at SummerSlam 1996. The Boiler Room Brawl match where the aim of the bout was to make your way from the Boiler Room down to the ring with the winner being the first man to claim The Undertaker's urn from awaiting Paul Bearer. There's only one winner for this, surely, isn't there? Oh, contraire, my friends. Taker was the first man to get down to the ring, but Paul Bearer inexplicably turned his back on his charge, which allowed mankind to apply the manable claw before Paul nailed Taker over the head with the urn, giving it to Mrs. Foley's baby boy for the victory. I can't believe it, man. Six years of partnership between Paul and Taker was gone like that. All of a sudden, I can't believe it. I tell you what though, the image of Barra walking down the ramp laughing still gives me the willies to this day. What an arsehole he was, eh? Number 5, Mean Fucking Gene from SummerSlam 1989. I didn't think that Mean Gene Oakland was capable of such profanity ahead of SummerSlam 1989, but that all changed with one sign merely falling off a wall. We all know Gene is the clean cut, snappy announcer, but he turned out to be one badass mother in the moments before an interview with WWF Intercontinental Champion Rick Rude and his manager Bobby the Brain Heenan. Cue the SummerSlam backdrop to fall from the wall. <laughs> Authentic sound effects from this sick guy. A shocked Oakland turned round and exclaimed, F it! Along with some criticism of WWE's handyman who installed this sign before the interview took place. The production team, no doubt panicking at what just happened, cut the cameras away to a live shot of the crowd and left poor old Tony Schiavone and Jesse Ventura to pick up the pieces. Oakland confessed in a shoot interview that the wrong tape was aired live on the show, as the real interview with Rude was taped beforehand. Kevin Dunn, you've had a f***ing mare there, son. Presuming you were working at the time. I tell you what though, I bet Gene is one naughty bastard in real life, you know. Rather than living the life of Archie the Inventor from Balamori, I reckon he's the sort of madman cut from the same cloth as Keith Moonan. You know, rock stars like that. Drugs, ladies, a lot. Gene's been there. Number four, the Mountie gets jailed and possibly something else at SummerSlam 1991. The big boss man and the Mountie faced off in a jailhouse match at SummerSlam 91 with the loser being forced to spend 24 hours in a New York City jail. The Mountie lost and was thrown into a police van by boss man and taken away by the authorities. You know, Vince McMahon had a strange humour back in the day and with the 90s being such a carefree time to be alive, he was at liberty to express this weird sense of nation on WWE programming in front of the world from time to time. Vince made the call to lock the Mountie away with what we can only presume was a gay biker. You know, I just gave off those sort of vibes. This assumption was hammered home Get your minds out of the gutter, hammered home. There's no pun intended there. When the man approached poor old Jacques Rougeau and said, Don't you just love the way leather feels against your body? We don't actually know what fate befell the Mountie after this, but the way that unnamed cellmate approached him at the start of his stint behind bars, we can only assume the very worst. Or the very best if you're looking at it from the point of view of the leather clad man, because he's down with that sort of thing. Still though, very strange happenings for a WWE show. Number three. Brock Lesnar murders John Cena at SummerSlam 2014. Suplex, 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 suplex. 
Suplex, 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 suplex. There were 16 f***ing suplexes in that match, lads. Brock Lesnar made John Cena his unadulterated bitch at SummerSlam 2014, making the leader of the C-Nation look weaker than any other man had done before this, or since it for that matter. There were calls for referee Charles Robinson to stop the damn match for crying out loud. When has that ever happened to John Cena during a match before? I can tell you. You're never alright. Although we've got to admit in hindsight there was nothing else WWE could have done in this situation after that streak ending win for Lesnar. But at the time, and after the nine year run Cena had had up until that point, it was nothing short of flabbergasting. Number two, Shane McMahon falls a long f***ing way at SummerSlam 2000. It was really, really high, okay? Like, you know, f***ing really high. Almost too high for someone to be falling off backwards just as part of their job. Jim Ross claimed it was 50 or 75 feet, but even though it was only 4 feet in reality, it was still really f***ing high, okay? Shane McMahon is absolutely radio rental. That means mental. Number one, The Undertaker's laugh at SummerSlam 2015. <laughs> I don't know what sounds coming out of his mouth there, but it's f***ing weird, isn't it? Imagine finding something so funny that your eyes look like they're going to explode out the top of your head, and your mouth looks like he's trying to swallow the 300-pound gorilla sat right next to you. That's what Undertaker did there. All Brock did was sit up. What was so funny? I don't know what else there is to say about this. It's WTF gold. It's vintage WTF, as Maggle Cole would say. It's just f***ing sensational, lads. Anyway, that was my list. Did I mean anything out? Of course I didn't, because I'm a sick guy. You can follow me on Twitter, hither. I've been Ross from WhatCulture.com, and I will see you very soon. Were you one of the unlucky few who couldn't get tickets for July's WCPW tapings? Well, make sure you pick up tickets for August as they're already extremely limited. On August 24th, we'll be presenting a special live pay-per-view quality show, WCPW Stacked, featuring Moose vs. Joe Coffey, the debut of the Women's Championship, Will Ospreay vs. Marty Skull, the WCPW Championship will be on the line. There'll be Joe Hendry, Joseph Connors, Big Demo, El Liguero, Primate, Grado, Drew Galloway, EC3, and GM'd by Eric Bischoff. Not just that, but on the 25th, We'll also be holding loaded tapings featuring the Kurt Angle Invitational, a pinfall and submission elimination rumble to decide who gets to face the Olympic hero in October. Grab your tickets for August at wc.pw while you still can. The two days are looking absolutely stacked.